I had a very, very good day this semester in the African history class that I teach. So we began by reviewing words in Zulu, which is a South African language. So Zulu is phonetic, and it uses the same alphabet as English. So easy enough, right? Sure, until you learn that Zulu has three letters that have clicks, the letter C, the letter X, the letter Q. So my students have all had to practice saying ha, ikikle, ukukokla, and ikwa. And they were terrible at it. <laughs> because they didn't know the sounds existed five minutes earlier. Which was the point. Learning happened while making them feel uncomfortable and challenged, showing that it's all okay to mess up. All in all, pretty good day. Then a student lingered after class. Lanky, with a buzz cut, he kicked his scuffed shoes on the ground and avoided eye contact. Uh, professor, uh, this is so new to me. Like, I have so much to learn. Like, speaking Zulu? I'm from Poway. <laughs> like, there's no Zulu in Poway. I feel like, what the fuck am I doing? Like, I'm way out of my element. <laughs> and his words felt so familiar. That mix of anxiety and hope, that confusion and worry that you're messing it all up. Well, good thing your job here is to learn new stuff, I responded. Just like how you learned that you needed about 15 mistakes just to say, Iqua. all you can do is get better. You can't get worse. <laughs> and I'm really glad you're here. Now, behind this Afrocentric version <laughs> of Mr. Holland's opus lay a lot more difficult story. So, I started taking Zulu my first semester as a graduate student at the University of Illinois in 2008. And I was so excited and terrified and nervous. Now, during this semester, we all chose names in Zulu. And as it was the fall of 2008, peak Obama as candidate season, I chose Temba. <laughs> Temba means hope. That's right. It was a different, brighter time, OK? <laughs> now, over the year, I made progress. But I still felt like I was fooling everyone, most of all myself. Yet I lucked out and managed to win a scholarship to spend the summer in South Africa to intensively study Zulu. Fuck yes, fuck me. <laughs> As my plane touched down, I felt more and more anxious. What was I doing? I'd barely taken Zulu for a year. What was I gonna do? And of course, the minute I joined the program, I found out that another student who'd been taking Zulu for two and a half years was already called Temba. Cool. I was like, how is this mild-mannered white dude from Wisconsin gonna steal my barely understood Zulu name? <laughs> but he'd been doing work longer than I had, and so I gave it up. And that's how I found myself on my first full day, my one Zulu thing, my name, immediately gone. Not a great start. For our first weekend, the program had placed us in a hotel in Durban, which is a large resort city on the Indian Ocean. Now, the entire hostel staff were Zulu speakers and had been warned that we were Zulu learners. No English was allowed. I think they saw 15 nervous-looking Americans and decided to have some fun. <laughs> so, after breakfast, a woman on the staff walked up to me with a polite, if slightly teasing, smile. After exchanging traditional greetings in Zulu, she stepped back and said, and what is your Zulu name? I looked at her and stammered in Zulu, I, uh, I don't have a Zulu name right now. She commanded, well, I am going to give you a Zulu name. <laughs> uh, okay, I said. She looked me up and down and then proclaimed, Zulu? Ungostudla. Stoodla, I repeated, fuck. <laughs> Sometimes in Zulu, names are more nicknames that describe someone. A very common Zulu name then describes someone's size. Stoodla denotes someone who is not fat. There is another word for that, okay? <laughs> but someone who is substantial in size. 
It can range from husky to beefy, or to put it more honestly, it's probably best described as thick with two C's. Now, if that was not enough, and it was, Studla is often accompanied with an idea phone, which is a word that emulates a sound or idea. What is an idea phone, friends? Mm. It's the sound of two love handles moving up and down as you walk. How does it sound? Oh, <gasps> ma fechle, fechle. <laughs> That's right. So from that moment to this one, my Zulu name was no longer Hope. No. It was now Studla ma fechle, fechle. Thicky von love handles. Not an auspicious start. <laughs> the next few weeks of Zulu language learning were Kanzima Kakulu, which is really fucking difficult in Zulu, in case you were curious. I had to figure out how to best drag my tongue around sounds like Gekolisa, Umvelinkangi, Inkwaba. I had to feel my way through a sense of inadequacy and fear. And I had to do it all as Studla, Stoutosaurus Supreme, with the spare tire, ma fechle, fechle. <laughs> and yet, I was starting to do it. I felt a little bit less alone, a little less overwhelmed, a little more competent. I felt like it was working. I stayed for a few days with an incredible Zulu-speaking family in Durban. And for some reason, their family felt that calling their new upstart American Chubbs McGee was a little bit extra. So they opted instead to call me Jabulani, the happy one. A nickname which, of course, did not make a single difference to anyone else who found Studla was too funny and kept it going. By my fifth week in the program, after navigating three separate buses, making change for the lady in the seat next to me, and awkwardly diffusing a moment where a woman tried to set me up with her daughter, all in Zulu, I thought, oh my God, I might have this. Studla might actually be getting this all under control. Which was, of course, the moment that the program shifted to three weeks spent living with a host family in a rural village. Cool, 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 cool. <laughs> Cool. Our van pulled into the dusty streets of Amangoko, where we were each introduced to our host families. My new host brother, Madoda Mkize, a friendly guy in his early 20s, walked up, shook my hand, and pointed the way to the family home. The house was made of packed mud brick and overlooked a full vegetable garden and a particularly mischievous goat who would later eat all of my socks out of my suitcase. <laughs> I was brought into the small living room in front of a giant old style television and sat on a couch resplendent with lace doilies my grandmother would have approved of immediately. <laughs> Five people smiled back at me eagerly. Lou, the matriarch of the family at 60, who referred to herself as my gogo, which means grandmother, Madoda, and three cousins, all under 10. I smiled back. They smiled harder. I smiled with more gusto. Someone was going to have to break the silence of anticipation. There was a chunky American in their living room, and he was there to learn Zulu for the next three weeks. My gogo Lu politely cleared her throat and then asked me my first question. Studla, what do you like to eat? Fuck yes, I thought. Okay. I've got this. I pounded the couch arm for emphasis, grinning, to show that I knew. Y'all, if there's anything a studla knows how to talk about, it is food. <laughs> and my favorite food, then and now, a potatoes. <laughs> I must have felt just like how Tariq, the famous It's Corn Kid, felt like asked at the State Fair about his favorite food. I love a dated reference. <laughs> I was ready. Gitanda ukutla amazamban. I thundered with the self-important excitement only a beginning level language student can possess. <laughs> I love a potato. <laughs> Except I didn't say Amazambane. 
In my haste, dare I say excitement to proclaim my love of the potato. I instead added a syllable. I said, Gitanda ukutla ama tombasane. Now, in my defense, those are pretty similar sounding. Ama tombasane, ama zambane. Except, ama tombasane does not mean potatoes. It means women. <laughs> so close. <sighs> when being asked by my host family what I love to eat, I basically looked them straight in the eye, <laughs> pounded the bedoilied couch arm, and bellowed, Dudla loves the ladies. <laughs> and yes, it is the same double entendre in both languages. that Amatombazane tumbled from my lips like a particularly malicious gymnast that I had fucked up. <laughs> Amazamban! I mean, no, potatoes! I shouted at my new family, all of whom were nearly bent over double with laughter. My grandmother Lou was laughing so hard that she was wheezing. Cool, I was gonna kill my grandma by talking about my love of the ladies. <laughs> great start, Studla. great, great job. I wanted to die, y'all. Like I wanted the earth to swallow me up and drag me into the lowest layers of hell and to feel the magma swallow my body as I dissipated into nothing, my screams of eternal humiliation merging miles below the earth's crust. That did not happen. Instead, my family dried their eyes, still chuckling. Madoda then hid my youngest cousin, a small girl of about five, <laughs> behind his back, and said, you cannot eat her today, Stoodla ma feshle feshle. <laughs> Which made the whole room laugh again. It still works, cool. Stoodla, Grandma Lou interrupted, please. Tell us something else about yourself. <laughs> Pick something safe, TJ, I thought frantically. Okay. My brain whizzed back and forth, trying to locate something to recover from this embarrassment. I, I know, I decided. I'll talk about my name. I mean, I technically have three names. I mean, I'm Stoodla, I'm occasionally Jabulani, and when I'm home, I'm TJ with no comments on my torso. I took a deep breath and said, Umdeniwami? My family, I have three names. The room went silent. Oh God, <laughs> what had I done wrong this time? In my anxiety, I just kept talking quickly. The room relaxed, Madoda laughed out loud, and I was very confused. TJ, Madoda said, smiling, switching to English for the first time. Okay, you, you were not wrong. You said three names, yes, but I think you forgot. Amagama does not just mean names. It means words. It also means letters. You said you have three letters and here, I think you know what these three letters might mean. I did. So in the province where I was staying in South Africa, the prevalence rate for a particular disease was one in three. It had been the scourge for decades and a painful epidemic. I had told my host family in contemporary Zulu slang that I had contracted HIV. Exactly 30 seconds after I had just told them that I loved to consume the vagine. <laughs> my daughter took one look at my face. Stoodler, 
you didn't do wrong. I mean, you did do wrong, he said, <laughs> laughing at my face. But you know enough to be wrong in a major way, Strudler. You know enough to truly mess up, he said. And then he turned serious. But that means to us that you are trying your best. You came here and you tried very hard. All you can do after this is be better. You can't do worse. <laughs> and with that encouraging and terrible statement, all you can do is be better, you can't do worse. It's stuck with me ever since, right? I mean, I really wanted to learn Zulu. I wanted to push and grow and force myself to be better and be more than all of this. And I failed big time. I humiliated myself, but I also showed someone how willing and hopeful I was. I made myself vulnerable and I forced myself to do something else, something new. And I'm happy to say Madoda was right. I literally could not do worse than that moment. <laughs> And the next three weeks proved it. I spent the rest of the summer and the next four years intensively studying Zulu and made mistakes, sure, but I learned how to be better. I'm fluent in the language now and I feel lucky to speak it every time I go back to South Africa. I teach it at the University of San Diego, which is wild. <laughs> But the biggest lesson, the most important part of it for me remains that in order to be good, to be strong or powerful or impressive at something, you have to drop your armor and your self-regard and you have to step willingly into messing up and being mocked. You have to feel the level of safety and confidence slip away from you like water in between your fingers as you try. And if you're ever gonna grow at something, you have to be willing to look like a complete fucking fool. But take it from Stoodla and his fechle fechle. Oh my lord. Give it up for the good doctor himself, TJ Talley, first of his name.